All right, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In this episode, we are going to take our craft around Duna and get it back home again. So here is our Duna Explorer Mark 1, and it says we're on escape trajectory out of Duna. And indeed, that is what ha is what's happening. So let's fly this particular mission. If you joined us last time, we blasted off from Duna. We avoided a near disaster when I realized that the panels blew right off of our ship in a noob-like moment. I forgot to bring them in when we re-entered. So, but it was okay. Disaster averted. The power stayed in these batteries miraculously, and we have rejoined with our our transit ship. And last episode, we made our escape burn, which gave us gives us this encounter back to Kerbin. So this is going to be a pretty short episode, because really all we have to do is just get this thing back home. So let's go in here and let's do a little time warp. Say goodbye to Duna and Ike as we go along. Bye guys. So I think what I'll do here in my staging, if I can even do it, yes I can. I'm going to drag these engines down here, put these engines here, so that the next thing that happens, I'll hit space and that's what we'll deploy our parachutes when we're coming in for a landing on Kerbin. Alright, let's continue. Flying away from Duna, we'll go 10,000 times here. So we've just escaped her sphere of influence. I guess I should call Duna him, right? Duna's a pretty masculine planet. It's like Mars, the red planet, the god of war. So here we go. So we're now we're just going to follow this orbit around. Duna's launching on ahead of us because we are now in an outside orbit. And the reason we had to come outside a little bit is because I made a sloppy phase angle attempt when trying to meet back up with Kerbin and I had to delay it because I ended up too far ahead in the orbit. Now we're coming back inside the orbit. We'll start to catch up on Duna again as we increase our speed. Let's take a look at the orbit here. Now as we go along, I'm just going to take a look at the orbit. I'm going to try to... Actually, I should set Kerbin as the target. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a maneuver node if it'll let me, which it looks like it's not. <laughs> so let's do this manually. Let's. I'm going to point actually um, right at Kerbin, right at the target. If you look at the nav ball, it's, I'm already pointed right at it, the pink reticule. It's telling me Kerbin's right over that way. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to test it out. I'm going to hover over the periapsis and I'm just going to give a little squirt with the H key and see what happens. And so that's actually bringing us farther away. So I'm going to go N and reverse. And you see we're bringing that periapsis right down, or we were, okay. So right about 17.8. Let's try a different, a different one now. We're pretty much, we have our orbits pretty much lined up inclination-wise. Actually, it looks like we're actually a little high. Yep, if you take a look, this blue orbit is definitely higher than the green one, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to point south. Which should be 180. So we're just turning that nav ball around. Oop. I got passed right by. Let's take a look. Yes. So we should be pointing straight down. A little wobbly here. And let's... Again, I'm gonna, just going to hit the RCS. Just gonna give a little squirt with the H key, and it's it looks like the periapsis is coming down. So I'm just gonna give a little burst with the engines here, just ever so slightly, like one percent. And you see that periapsis is just getting lower. So the lower, the better. Just making these mid-course correction burns, and the farther out we do it, the more efficient, because it'll have more time to take effect have to burn less fuel in essence. I'm coming right down now. Just toggling it. I'm gonna go to RCS now. Let's press the H key. Wow, we're getting close. So I'm gonna make it 
right about there, about 131 meters. We're basically going to slam right into it, which is, that's fine. That's pretty much what we wanted to anyway. So that was um, just, a, again, a good observation. I noticed that our blue orbit was too high, so we just pointed it down. It was kind of intuitive. And you see now it's lined up. We've lined up our inclination with Kerbin, and we're basically going to smack right into it. We can make further corrections as we get all closer. So let's do that. Let's time warp a little bit. And we see that Kerbin is just coming up on us by the sun there. So Kerbin is actually passing us. And again, this was not the most efficient encounter. It was actually pretty sloppy. And the reason was is because I just missed that phase angle. Missed it by quite a bunch, actually. So now we have to come inside. Here we go. We're hitting the periapsis of our solar orbit, which means this is the fastest we're going. We're traveling at around 10.3 kilometers per second, which is just stupid fast. But in space, you can't even tell. It feels like we're not going anywhere. So this is anti-target. I'm just going to point at Kerbin. I'm going to find the target reticule. Somewhere in this vicinity, we should start to see a little flickering of Kerbin. So let's just increase the time a little bit. And in fact, I see it. Just the li first little blips of light. Just at the top of that solar panel. If you guys can see it. Our home planet. So let me speed it up a little bit. Now we can really start to see it. See the moon orbiting back there, min mist to the left, just about in its gravity range, and there. So at this point, we are now in Kerbin's sphere of influence. If we did nothing, the gravity would pull us actually in towards Eve. We would actually pass Eve's orbit. Unfortunately, not when Eve was going to be there. Now, if you really wanted to sit and work it out, you could probably figure that out, but we're not going to do that. So we see we're hitting the planet at this awkward kind of angle, but again, that's okay, because we are just we just want to hit the atmosphere and, and get into the planet. Now, if we were flying a shuttle or some other kind of aircraft, we would probably want to sit here and mess with this orbit just to make sure that everything was okay. We were going to land at the, K the Kerbin Space Center, but since... All we really have to do is just get our rocket in the atmosphere and land any old place. It doesn't really matter. And so I see where our periaps is 72. We're just going to go ahead and bring that in. Add a maneuver node. I'm just going to pull it towards the planet. Just pull one of these radials. And we're, it's pretty much going to pull the periapsis right into the planet. 48. So I'll just use that as a guide. We're going to point the ship. And it makes sense, too. We're pointing it in towards the planet. Maneuver node's jumping around because it's such a small... I mean, look at that burn. It's 0.7 meters per second. Take a look at the orbit display. Periapsis height. We want to just make it about 30. Right there. That's fine. So we've now guaranteed that we are going to skim the atmosphere and re-enter. So let's get a little time warp going here. That's coming in fast. Let's see. And we're just about past Minmus's orbit. Take a look. Probably right behind us now. Minmus is somewhere out there. Mimis is always hard to see. It's just a tiny little speck. Oh, there she is. If you take a look right just past that engine. Actually, we'll put her right here, right towards the nose cone. There she is, a little tiny Minmus. All right, let's continue forward. Where's our moon? 
moon is to the left somewhere. Up oh, there it is. Right about there. So we're kind of flying up towards the poles here. And there's Kerbin, and there's our home continent, which we are not going to be landing at because we are coming in here on the dark side. We're actually could probably going to land on the dark side. I'm going to guess somewhere just over here. Somewhere in this area. And that's okay. Like I said, it doesn't really matter too much. We have this whole landing section. In fact, I'm going to transfer fuel I almost forgot to do that, into our lander. We no longer need the uh, this part here. The part that got us. Just gonna grab all that fuel out of there. Okay. Just gonna get a little closer. Nice view of Kerbin right there. So at this point, we can just decouple. I'm pretty sure we don't need anything else. Let's just do an F5 just in case something weird happens. Now we don't have power in this vessel, but we should have plenty of, of juice left in the batteries for re-entry, so we should be okay. So now we're swiveling around because we're getting so close. I'm gonna point this thing straight down. And we'll say goodbye. Undock. So I'm just going to take this thing and just RCS away. Oh, just go away from us. Just go away. Get the heck out of here. So that thing will just crash. It'll just re-enter. Meanwhile, we will be just fine. Point this thing retrograde opposite the way we're traveling. There's our craft right down there. And that's cool. Our, our home planet, here we come. We're getting there. Nedbald and Enlin Kerman on their way home. Just about to hit the upper atmosphere now. I'm gonna press the G key, get our gear out, because in this case we didn't put a decoupler on here, so we're gonna want to land this thing uh, lander style. We're gonna definitely have the parachutes to help us, but uh, we're gonna use this whole thing to get us down here. That's why I transferred the fuel. We're definitely gonna need them. Uh, I'm just gonna activate the engines. Almost forgot about that. Move this stage down here. Plenty of fuel. We don't even need a whole lot. I'm just gonna tab over to the other vehicle. Oh. And it won't let me. <laughs> That's okay. Here we go with the reentry effects. Now the other ship should also be having those effects because we are close enough to it. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm fairly certain. Well, it should. <laughs> it should be having effects. Oh, there we go. There we go. They're coming in hot. Just burning off all that velocity. Wow, we have... 3,200 meters per second to kill. That's a lot of speed. Here comes our orbit. Still falling. It's bursting through the atmosphere. Still killing velocity. 
And there we go. These two guys in here. There's one of them. There's the other one. Cool little view right there inside the lander can. I didn't realize this thing looked so cool. Yeah, there's one. There's the other one. Still burning. Still burning up. Still burning up. <laughs> speed time up a little bit. So we're, it looks like we're going to land somewhere in this ocean. And that's okay. Like I said. We got our parachutes. We got a little engine power. So we're going to be able to descend pretty nicely. Alright. Let's just get the parachutes deployed. Err. Let's get the parachutes deployed. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to do it manually. Now these are going to deploy a little higher because it still is from the from Duna. I'm just going to do a little burn because I don't want the uh, ship to be ripped apart when those parachutes deploy. I think as long as you keep the speed below uh, 200 or rather like around 100 meters per second, it shouldn't rip any components apart. Plus I've got these radial chutes attached kind of to the main body, so it's not like this whole top part will be yanked up. Just want to get close to 800, I'm going to do a little burn again. Alright, here we come. There we go. And look, we had plenty of power, so it's all good. And we're just going to fall. A little view from inside. Getting there. Ah, nice shot of the moon right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. This game is so pretty. I might have said that a few times before. Let's gonna do a little burst. Not like we need the ship to be intact or anything, but there we go. We are in the water, turning over. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this little Duna series. I hope you learned a lot from it, how to get to interplanetary objects. And this was a short episode, just because we pretty much made all the appropriate maneuvers in the last episode in our little interplanetary series. So I think next time we'll talk about space planes. We'll make um, a, sp a plane that can hang out inside the atmosphere and then after that we'll make an episode about how to get that plane into space. I mean after all it is called a space plane, right? So hope to see you guys there. Catch you later.